Hello church family, Drew here, missing you all very much. I want to tell you about my hero, a man called Charles Simeon. Uh, this is him here. He was such a dude. Uh, born in 1759, he led a church in Cambridge for 53 years and in many ways is a model for lots of churches like ours. He was hated by most for his uncompromising preaching from the Bible. And if one thing defined him, it was his conviction that God speaks in his word. There are some extraordinary stories of his life to tell, which we won't have time for now. But why do I want to talk to you about Simeon? So the other week I was reading through uh, this book here, uh, which is a collection of sermons and articles by Charles. And the last one in the book really knocked me for six. It's a Bible thought on Luke 8, 18, which says, Take care, therefore, how you hear. Take care, therefore, how you hear. And he opens like this. Excuse the, the old English. Our Lord elsewhere cautions his people to take heed what they hear. Nor can anything be more necessary than to be on our guard against error. But the caution how we hear was also necessary for the following reasons. And Simeon goes on to say, it's because God himself speaks to us by the preacher. God himself speaks to us by the preacher. Simeon simply says, if they, that's the preacher, preach what is found in the scriptures, their word, as far as it is agreeable to the mind of God, is to be considered God's? Now just think about that for a moment. When Rich or Mark or whoever it is stands up to give a sermon, do I really believe I'm about to be addressed by God himself speaking? Simeon goes on to say, with what humility then ought we to attend to the preacher's words? Exclamation mark. What judgments may we not expect? If we slight it, another reason, well, because every sermon increases either our salvation or condemnation. Every sermon either increases our salvation or condemnation. Well, that's a stark way of putting it, isn't it, Simeon? But as Simeon rightly points out, that is the logic that Jesus uses in the rest of the verse in Luke 18. See, the word delivered is either a taste of life or a taste of death. So why am I telling you this? We have got to obey our Lord's caution. Simeon says, a humble mind will naturally receive instruction in a proper manner. A humble mind will naturally receive instruction in a proper manner. So two applications from Simeon. Firstly, we should hear openly and we should hear honestly. Can you listen too carefully, therefore, to a sermon? How often I hear a sermon, maybe even take notes before, uh, during, but then just move on from it as if God had said nothing of any relevance to my life. Imagine if I really believed God spoke to me on a Sunday. I'd be chewing over it in my mind every spare second of the week, wouldn't I? Second application. We should hear with a desire to profit. We should hear with a desire to profit. Simeon puts it this way. It is the practical hearer only that derives benefit to his soul. That means, if we aren't at all times applying sermons to our lives, then the word of God is wasted and won't benefit us at all. Stern words from the mighty preacher. I wonder if we really believe them, how differently we might approach hearing Rich and Co week in, week out on a Sunday, and how differently our lives might look week in, week out. Something to ponder.